Hello, this is Ron Clark bringing you the seventh and final video in my series on the little book, Love Letter to a Dying World. This one is about the static self and the magic of integration. I have to apologize. Uh, the uh, introductory uh, uh, material here was so complex that I needed to write it down. So I'm reading from a script, which kind of shows in the video. I hope you'll forgive that, but it was the only way I could get it all out, everything that needed to be gotten out, out. So, this is the last video. Um, I'm not particularly sure what I'm going to be doing next, but it will probably be on the magic of yod heh vav -He Adonai. So, please subscribe to my YouTube channel if you haven't already. I hope you enjoy and will let me know what you think. Bye-bye. Resonance and dissonance. Because they are such primal, visceral, and automatic forces, they bind the sentient self to physical manifestation or incarnation. We can ignore our physical body and journey beyond it with our minds, but we cannot fully leave it while we are alive. We are always connected through our senses to some degree. We are literally bound to it until we die. Our physical body, to which we are bound, exists only in the very present moment of space-time. We can remember past moments, but we can live only in the present moment. Only the present moment has presence and full sensorial impact. What is past no longer exists, and what is future has yet to exist. Only the present moment exists. It is only in the present moment that we can express ourselves, create, think, feel, perceive, love, hate, etc. It is only in the present moment that we are alive and live our lives. But what is the nature of this present moment? What is its duration, or rather, how long does a present moment last? Well, listen carefully, because this may be a bit difficult to grasp. We experience the passage of time as three factors. Continuous duration, sequence, and change. Thus, a moment in that continuity must be a complete cessation of duration, sequence, and change. It must all come to a stop. Now our brains have the right idea when it comes to perceiving a moment in time-space. We take a snapshot of the world and then we process it, taking all the sensorial data we can from it. Then we take another snapshot, process it, and so on. The only problem is our brains are too slow and too limited in their ability to absorb sensory input. The fact is, a present moment is infinitely small and change is, and sequence are infinitely pervasive. In other words, a present moment of time-space is infinitely brief and filled with an infinite amount of change that always occurs in sequence. And here's a mind bender for you. Since it is infinitely small, it must be everywhere, or in the case of space-time, every when. That's simply the nature of infinities. What is infinitely small is simultaneously infinitely large. I suggest that you meditate on that little nugget when you have the chance. So, the human brain is not quick enough, nor big enough, to truly perceive the present moment. But, the mind is. In fact, it is always perceiving the fullness of the present moment. It's just that we don't recognize it beneath all the usual chatter of our thoughts. The physical body is not only the vessel which holds our brain, 
but also the vessel which holds our mind and all the rest of our being together simultaneously. The whole function of the static self is to be the receptacle of our sentient self, our solitary self, and the singular self. To hold them all together in one unit so that the I may peer through our eyes and perceive the infinitely small present moment from our particular perspective. Ultimately, that's what this whole shebang, this whole kaleidoscope of existence is about. The I experiencing the present moment through our eyes. To my mind, the very highest magic is to consciously and intentionally integrate the I, your solitary self and your sentient self, into your static self and perceive the present moment through your physical body. This magic of integration, so to speak, is very powerful, very transformative of self, very expansive, very healing and invigorating. Taken to its fullest, great things can be achieved in this state of complete integration. It is the true speaking of the name, yod heh bav All of my own work, has revolved around this magic of integration. All of the magical tools I've made, the radiators and gate makers, have all been about the magic of integration. All of my books, and even this little video series, have been about the magic of integration. For I sincerely think it to be the highest magic and the most needed in this moment of time-space. So let's get down to the nitty-gritty and do some integrating. It's really quite simple, as usual. So I suggest you find a quiet, private place to do this work, especially at first. So, settle yourself down, quiet yourself, quiet your mind, and reach up for the eye. Focus yourself in the eye. Feel the eye around you, infinitely around you. All is I. Now you have to sort of change your perspective and look down within the eye, down till you spot your solitary self and descend into your solitary self as the I. Okay, now you are in your solitary self as the I. The I pervades your solitary self. See all the familiar aspects of your solitary self. Sense your solitary self. Now looking down, Still further, you descend into your sentient self. Oh, you are now the I and your solitary self existing within your sentient self. Feel your whole sentient self. Now look down again and descend with the I, your solitary self, and your sentient self into your static self. Fill your whole body with, your, with the I. Feel your body. See what is around you as the eye, peering through your eyes. Feel everything, smell everything, taste everything, hear everything as the eye.
stay like this for as long as you can, sensing everything as the eye. Time is right. Let go of all your visualizations. Let go of that sense of I being present and resume your normal awareness. <clears throat> now, this practice can be carried out pretty much indefinitely. It is, for the most part, a fairly non functional state of awareness. Um, mostly because it takes so much focus to achieve. But it can be prolonged. It can even be taken outside of your room, outside of just the practice, and expanded into the outside world. For example, you can go for a walk as the I, experiencing everything as the I, perceiving everything in the world as the I. I suggest that you, you practice. And practice carrying it further than your little room. But start in the room, start just privately with yourself and nothing else. Um, this is the best way to get used to the process of bringing the I into the present moment. After viewing all that footage, I realized I needed to add a little addendum here. Um, this magic, when, uh, when pursued, uh, can lead to several different types of perceptions. Um, as the, the one, the I, fully integrated, into your physical body along with your um, solitary self and your sentient self. Um, you have faculties of perception available to you that aren't ordinary. Um, and I suggest using them intentionally. So when you have fully integrated, um, proceed to look at the things in the room surrounding you and perceive the I within them. Some things radiate the I because they are naturally integrated and consciously, intentionally um, express the I in their physical uh, manifestation. And that's a very uh, a joyous thing to see. Um, the image of two mirrors placed in uh, such a, a relationship with each other that you see uh, infinite reflections in the mirrors. It's that sort of experience um, of seeing the eye, seeing the eye through you, seeing the eye through something else. It's it's crazy. It's really cool. Um, so this is a way to perceive how certain things are naturally integrated and other things are not. Uh, it's usually the man-made things that are just sort of dead, almost, if you will. Uh, the eye doesn't radiate uh, in the same way. It's still present, of course, and you can perceive it, but it doesn't radiate with the same intensity. Um, so, it, it experiment with the state. Uh, within your room, and then if you choose to go outside for a walk, experiment with it outside. See how different people are. Um, how many people do you meet that radiate the eye in this way? That's a really good question to uh, investigate. So, that is it 
for my videos, the end. Bye-bye.